On today's episode of What's Going On With Shipping, come sail away on the Pyx Ocean, 80,000 ton bulker that literally, I mean literally, has massive sails. Yes, we are cranking up a little come sail away by sticks, and we are setting sail. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. I would play you sticks, but copyright issues create huge problems on YouTube. The Pyrex Ocean set sail from Shanghai to Singapore, now en route to Brazil. The ship is hoisting two massive sails. That's right, we are going back using old technology in a new way, but these are unlike any sails you've ever seen before. All of this is an effort to reduce the carbon footprint produced by ships. Big massive problem. We are aiming to go from a reduction initiated in 2020 all the way up to potentially a 50% and potentially 100% reduction in all carbon emissions at sea by 2050. Just depends on how frisky IMO feels about that. Let's go ahead and take a look at this story. But before we do so, if you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they appear. All right, come sail away, come sail away. I promise that will be the last time you will ever hear singing from me. This is a story over in G-Captain by Bloomberg. Cargill tests sales in effort to slash fuel burn from shipping. So Cargill is one of the biggest movers of bulk products, particularly food, in the world. 225 million tons of cargo per year are moved around the world on this. And this is the first ship to be retrofitted with two what's called wind wings. These things are 37 and a half meters. It's about 123 feet high. And they're designed to give propulsion to the vessel, not sole propulsion, but basically it alleviates part of the motorized propulsion that the vessel uses. And again, this is all an effort to see a reduction in the amount of carbon footprint in the vessel. This is Pyx Ocean right here. The ship is uh, heading out right now, 80,000 tons, registered in Singapore, built in Japan, owned by a Japanese corporation, and again, under a Carghill charter. She is right now in the Straits of Malacca. She had sailed from Shanghai to Singapore. She's en route on the Cape Route. She's going to get around the northern top, top there of the Sumatra uh, Island and then head down to the Cape, Cape of Good Hope, and then across to South America. And it's going to be really interesting to see what kind of fuel savings they get on this voyage. This is from Cargill talking about their ocean transportation system, which is massive. They have a, a huge global network, over 1,900 vessels, 4,000 voyages a year. They are moving 225 million tons of cargo annually, and you can get a, an idea there of where some of those f commodities are flowing from. Iron ore, coal, grain, sugar, fertilizer, massive amounts, including some coming out of the Black Sea, which makes Cargill a big player. But the issue of fuel is a big one. Back in 2020, the International Maritime Organization, which is the UN shipping arm, put in place this new proposal that we're going to start seeing reductions in carbon footprint. The first part was use of very low sulfur fuel oil versus high sulfur fuel oil. But now we're coming up on these kind of marks as we get to 2050, seeing that reduction down to 50%. But most recently, a conference was held where they're talking about amping that up even further with potentials to go to 100%. So this vessel, and this is a promotional video that was done by Carghill, and so I'm going to have this playing in the background here, is really gives you the idea of the technology involved. So two of these wind wings were installed, and they're developed by a company called Yara Marine Technology. Now, you may remember Yara Marine Technology. They helped build that autonomous sailing vessel, excuse me, the autonomous uh, container ship that was used up in Norway battery powered, used coastally with no crew on board. This is obviously something different. This is using wind technology. And these are massive sails. Now we've seen things like this mounted on ships before, large rotors that were used to harness and spin, but they created a lot of problems because of the spinning motion. These are pure sails. They're just using them to create kind of high pressure, low pressure differential areas. And what they do is achieve a great deal of savings. These were installed at the Costco shipyard in Shanghai. And one of the things they're advertising is this is going to potentially see a reduction of 20% 
in their fuel consumption as they go along. Now, understand there are a lot of factors that go into these sails being effective. Number one, the route they're sailing, how much wind is going to be on that route, currents, all those. The number of sails, this ship has two sails mounted. Uh, some vessels are looking to carry more or less of those, and obviously the amount of wind you encounter. But what they're touting is a savings of 1.5 tons of fuel daily. Now, to put that into some context here, ships, if you look at how much this will save, it'll save about 1,095 tons per year. That's a 20% savings over time. And for every ton of fuel you don't burn, that is three tons less of carbon dioxide that is put into the ocean. These sails are retractable. They actually bend down, so you don't have to worry about them being up to get under bridges so your air draft isn't really implement really a big factor there is a weight issue you're trading off on weight and that's something i'm really interested to see these things are not light they're going to take away from the weight of the vessel there are stability issues that need to be calculated into this but again these are huge massive wind sails very much like you would have a mast on an ocean going vessels and you'd put the sails out these vessels are designed to catch that wind and use it they have both the main sail and these two edge sails and so that you can really turn them and harness and capture the wind which means that you're going to be saving in your emissions as you go on the question is what kind of savings you get over the long time Pyx Ocean, you would not expect to see really a savings versus the cost for about seven to 10 years. That's the estimate that's coming out on the company right now. However, for a company like Cargill that has a huge global footprint, that has long voyages because grain and ore tend to go long distances, this could be a way to offset some of those fuel costs and particularly reduce their carbon emissions. Is this the end all be all of, of, of sa sailing? Will we see these huge masted sailing ships taking over? Probably not. Uh, you would see maybe a change in the propulsion of the vessels to a greener type of fuel, maybe methanol, maybe a mix of ammonia or, or hydrogen or uh, battery power. We don't know. But what we do know is there's a lot of ex experimentation being taken place on the high seas. And it really has to come from big companies like Cargill that can afford to experiment on a ship like this. What's the loss of cargo on board? What's the offset in the cost to purchase this versus the actual savings? Is this going to be in a, a big enough inducement for smaller companies to put these sales on? If I'm getting 10% reduction with each sale going up, is there a point where you reach a scale of uh, negative? So there's a contract just put out by this company to install four sales on a vessel. Will they achieve a 40% reduction? I don't know. I think you're going to start getting that kind of feedback into it, and you're not going to be able to get the savings you think. However, this is a great experimentation. I am really excited about it. I really want to see what happens here. We've seen sails being used before, everything from kites to those rotors I talked about. But this one, perhaps is the one that has the greatest potential right now to produce a savings for ships. I hope you enjoyed today's video, a little bit of sailing on what's going on with shipping. You can never go wrong being on a sailboat. They're beautiful. Although this one is a huge, massive bulk carrier that burns still a lot of diesel fuel and carries a lot of grain and ore. If you enjoyed today's episode, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a big thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit that super thanks button down below, or head on over to Patreon and become a monthly or yearly subscriber, a patron of the page, and it'll get you some perks. Like, for example, in our next episode of What the Ship coming out this week, you'll get to see one of my Patreon subscribers choose one of the five top stories. Until our next episode, this is Sal signing off.